There are nine pretty complex steps that take a foundation from this to this. And in this video, you're not just gonna learn all nine. I'm gonna show you some pretty confidential information on how much each step costs. You're really not gonna believe it. Yes, everyone, I hope we're all feeling healthy. My name is Ben, working on a 22 million pound construction site based in the UK. And today, I'm gonna show you what you've probably never seen before. Let's get into it. So this is probably one of the most accurate breakdowns on how you build foundations for a new build in the UK that you're gonna see on YouTube. And we've got some pretty complex steps, but before we get to those, before we even start working on the foundations, we have to understand where the foundation is located. So the first things first is getting the engineer to mark out the precise location of the foundation. This is how we do it. So this is a total station standing on a tripod. It will send an infrared laser to a prism that is located on either end of site, telling it where its exact location is. From that point, you can type in coordinates and find out any point on site. And that is how we find every wall, road, and foundation to the precise millimeter. Now, the topography of the site that I'm on is literally a slope like that. So we have to do a lot of excavating, hence why it's one of the most expensive parts of the job. As you're gonna see right now, boom, look at that. So excavate ground to correct level. This costs approximately eight grand, which is a lot of money. But when you break it down, you understand the amount of heavy machinery involved, the amount of health and safety procedures we have to put in the place, and also the ground workers working on excavating it, you will under it, it kind of like makes more sense why it is eight grand. Now we spent 250 pounds for setting out the foundation and we're eight grand deep already for the excavation of the foundation. So already within nine days, we have spent almost 10 grand, which is really kind of mad. And next up is a part of the process of building that foundation that I bet you've probably never seen before. I gotta show you this. Believe it or not, right, I'm standing a fair bit away here, but I can feel the ground shake because uh, it pushes force into the ground to get out any air gaps. So that's what it's doing right now. It's called a ram axe and it costs approximately 210 pound per week. Now we have to do this every single time before starting to build the foundation to make sure the ground is strong. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Not something you see in a construction site every day of the week. <laughs> so it really doesn't take long to compact the ground. So I put a day here, but it could be half a day and 210 pounds to get it on hired. So that's a fair bit of money. You can see already that the cost of groundworks and the machinery that they use is very, very expensive. Now, we are moving quick in this video. Step four, we've got to install the drainage. Let me show you exactly how it's done. So we have the water and the sprinkler main going at 900 mil below the foundation level. And then at 450 mil, we have the waste. Uh, so what the ground workers have done, have marked where the waste is gonna poke out and then where it's gonna finish. So all of these will be like connected to wash hand basins and toilets and showers and what have you um and then once the ground workers lay the drainage they they, they then got to do an air test to make sure there's no leaks within the drain because the last thing you want is uh, drainage carrying waste to be leaking below the foundation because that would stink your house up <laughs> all right so we're moving quick throughout this video can you put in the comments below how long you think it takes to build a foundation for a new build in the UK. I'm just gonna give you this exact uh, breakdown of the foundation, plus the breakdown of this whole, of the whole house that we are building on this construction site. So you'll be able to see it all in a link in the description. The only thing that I ask from you is that you like, subscribe, and let me know how long you think it takes to build a foundation for the new build. Next up then, we've got to install the blinding. So the drainage has been fitted. Next up, we've got to install the sub base that the foundation will actually sit on top of. Let's get into it. So the way this works then is we have a total station just there, which basically measures, finds the level for which where the foundation needs to be set. And then we use a staff then, stick or a staff, the ground workers use that, put it on the ground. And then when it beats, it says that basically it's on the correct level, which means that the blind in, it finds the certain thickness for the blinding then. So then once we find the, the thickness, we can then smooth that out flat, like the ground workers are doing right now. 
with the rake and with the shovel and then we just even it out and we do that basically all around here. I hope you're getting a better understanding on how much work is involved in building a foundation even before we get to the point where it's even looking like a foundation. The drainage has been fitted, the blinding has been put on and next up then we have to put the formwork insulation down. Now this the, the, the detail of this foundation will depend on what construction project you're working on but currently building these new builds this is exactly what I'm doing and it's pretty rare so let me show you. So initially we start off with just setting up the ground then we excavate the ground and put in the drainage then we backfill which means that we dig the hole we put in the drainage then we fill the hole back in aka backfill and then after that we lay the DPM on top which is where we are right now. So the DPM has to be, uh, has to overlay on top of itself with 150 mil. So if I was to take this top off, you would expect this DPM to be 150 mil past this line here. So it'd finish around here, um, all the way down, which is one of the things that I have to check. So I'm gonna check this quickly, but the next part of the process is laying this blue DPM down. So then after we've laid the blue DPM, the next thing on the agenda is to lay what's called buildite. Now, the detail for the foundations will change depending on what housing job you're on. But on this job, we, we install a thing called buildite, which is almost a, almost a form of insulation. So we lay this buildite down and this will become the formwork for the concrete, as you'll see in a few steps time. But right now we've got all the buildite behind me. So we'll set all this out correctly, all the groundwork as well, all ready for uh, part of the foundation to be poured a little bit on later. Now this part, as you can see, is the most expensive, coming in at four grand and taking around two days to fit. But the good news is, it's actually starting to look a little bit more like the foundation. You can look at it, you can understand how big the slab is going to be because the concrete is gonna be poured directly into that formwork but before we do the concrete pour there's one thing we gotta do and that's reinforce it right now at the bottom of site is a really good place to be because you can see all the different stages of the foundation on one side we've got the excavators creating the exact level for the foundation and then beside that we have the blinding and the drainage already fitted and then beside that we've got the dpc and build eye insulation already finished already for the concrete pour. So this is basically a foundation already for the pour. So we've got the blind in beneath, we've got the DPC that's been laid, the polythene, then we've got the build eye insulation, then we've got the DPM inside, the self, the self adhesive layer, and then we've got the reinforcement sitting on top. So now we will pour the toe, so that will be the toe, and then we'll put in the formwork around the toe and then pour the slab on top then. And that will be another foundation on this construction site complete. Happy days. As soon as the reinforcement goes in, it's one of the most exciting part because it makes you realize like, oh, we are close to the concrete pour now. You spend in so much money the the build eye insulation was four grand and then on top of that we you also spend another three thousand one hundred pounds for the reinforcement but it's worth it because it's an integral part of the foundation that's gonna stabilize the house for the next hundred years well we hope so anyway <laughs> now in a minute i'm gonna show you the exact method we use to inspect the drains that we installed a while back you're gonna want to see how that's done because it's pretty mind-blowing but before i show you let's pull the concrete this is a perfect example of how we pour a foundation for a house in the uk so we have the concrete wagon that comes onto site and then we get an excavator to put their, their hand under the concrete wagon they pour the concrete into the hand as you can see there and what the driver will then do is bring it over to the foundation pour it in and then we have three ground workers then one of them on the right there is holding a vibrator to get out all of the air bubbles within the concrete and then the two on the left are evening and they're out so this is the first pour out of what's typically two or three different pours um, and we just keep on doing this till we get the correct level set up by the engineer and that is essentially how a concrete pour is done in construction and that is how a house a foundation of a house in the uk is built the concrete has been poured and we have spent around 22 grand so far just on the foundation of the house that's incredible um 
after three days of the concrete being poured, it dries, and then we can take off the shutter in to allow the tanking to be done. Now, the tanking is all done for water protection to make sure water doesn't seep into the foundation and which creates like rising damp, which you do not want. <laughs> so the next part of the foundation is laying the tanking. So what we've got is a carpenter just over there taking off the formwork which was encasing the concrete. And after we take it off now, we put on this blackjack. And then after we lay this blackjack, we'll lay a black tank in on top. And so the detail will look like this water protection, the DPM, which is below the foundation, will lap over and across. And then we'll have the tank in then go start over this and then come up and across to lap it in. And so that any rain that comes in can't get into the foundation and below the foundation, uh, creating damp issues. So that's the next part of developing the foundation um, for modern houses in the UK. After you install the tanking and the DPM, you have pretty much completed the foundation for a new build in the UK. Costing roughly £21,100 and taking approximately three weeks and three days. I wonder if you guys got it right in the description when you predicted it earlier. It's quite a long time, but then again, it's an integral role and an integral part of keeping the house stabilized and safe. So it's pretty important that we get it right. So after all of this is done, we then have to inspect the drainage that we installed right at the start hasn't been damaged and we inspect it. This is the really cool way that we inspect the drainage in the UK after the foundations have been complete. How the hell do you inspect new drains that have just been installed in the UK? Well, let me show you because it might not be what you expect. And it all starts with this tiny drum. We start off by blasting the drone with water, getting rid of all the mud and dirt. Once all cleaned, we're then ready to put the drone in. I mean, just look at this thing go. <laughs> now this drone gives a live feed to the guys up above the drain to see what it actually looks like. It goes from manhole to manhole, checking all the drains that have been installed. So what are you looking, what are you looking for when you- Any when you... cracks, any defects. Right, okay. When the drone needs to come back, it is attached to a rope that the guys just pull on to bring the drone back to safety. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you gathered some insights. If you did, please comment, please subscribe. It helps me more than you can imagine. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.